Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we are back on, what are we calling this? The Hillside Lake? The Lakeside Hill Trail? The Hillside Lake Trail? One of those two. Going from the main road that we've already put in, or the main drive, down to the lake. So we're kind of part way through. Things are fairly dry. I mean, not completely dry, but we're gonna give it a shot today. So see if we can give you a side-by-side -side comparison on a section of topsoil that is tilled up versus a section that's not. And then I wanna tell you why I'm doing that as well. And so number one, the reason that I till my roads before scooping out all that topsoil is that it gives it kind of a hard bottom. So you have that soft material up top and then a hard bottom underneath that's easy and consistent for a bucket to rest against and slide across. So if you don't do that, at least I found because I'm not an expert operator that it's easy to dig down too much, too little, just constantly back and forth, maybe a little bit going perfectly straight as well, but it just gives a, a more consistent bottom roadbed for me before I bring in gravel. And so the second big reason is that, and, and maybe this doesn't apply so much inside the woods, but out in the fields there, when you have a lot of sod on top, is that tiller's gonna grind up, chew up all of that debris and mix it in with everything else. And so when you wanna go and use that, that topsoil later on or at a later date, it's gonna spread a lot easier. You're not gonna have all these big clumps of sod and, and debris that's not kind of mashed up already. So this takes care of that right up front. So anyway, this is not our first time tilling in the woods and I'm sure we're gonna hit some roots here. We're gonna see how the ideal tiller handles those. This does have a slip clutch on there, so it's gonna stop and allow um, the tiller, the machine to get beyond that obstruction, then get back to work. We may have some stumps that we can use a stem breaker on, we're gonna find out, but overall, it's a nice spring day, we're gonna capitalize on it. So let's get to work and see how it goes. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below.
All righty, well, there you have it, folks. Got our tilling done on this side here. It is pretty good most of the time. It's a little rough when you hit a, a big root or something buried underneath the, the surface there, but uh, overall, ideal tiller did really well. That slip clutch worked like it needed to when the timing was right. Scraped up the front loader cylinder. I was digging out with a stump bucket, a, a vine. Got a little got a little close to a tree there, scrape that up. I'll need a little touch up paint there, but overall pretty smooth. Uh, no major issues really to think about. I mean, this thing's built like a tank. 1025 works great in the woods, easy to manage through these tight spots. It dawned on me that there were a couple areas I still had to rip trees out, but whatever. I'm gonna have to widen up a few other areas anyways. We'll come back maybe with the skid steer and tree puller or the mulcher and get that stuff out of here too. But uh, next up is gonna be getting in here with the Kubota. Gonna use the big eight foot box blade, use the shanks, uh, kind of side by side, rip up the rest of the area and then start scooping out or clearing out all this topsoil, you can see how this stuff is, you know, it's just kind of fluffed up now and broken up really nice. A lot of that uh, sticks and leaves and everything else is going to decay a lot quicker and make this really nice to spread out somewhere else uh, out here at the property or elsewhere. But I've done the majority of my topsoil clearing with my skid steer and bucket. Going to try that box blade now and see how that does. Might be a little bit more of a learning curve. Um, you can't really pile it up with a box blade too much, so... I'm going to have to end up using a bucket on there anyways, but we'll give it a shot, see how it goes, and try a different tool out. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are in the market for something for your tractor, we sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country every day. Something like that stump bucket up front, tiller out back, all different sizes for different sized tractors, so check out goodworkstractors.com. And I hope you did enjoy today's video. If you like watching tractors at work, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below to see more. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Oh,